think back to the last time you were put on the spot. Somebody asked you a question. They requested feedback. You had to make small talk or maybe just introduce yourself. How did it feel? If you're like most people, it felt awkward, uncomfortable, and probably nerve-wracking. Planned communication, those presentations, the pitches, the meetings with agendas, those are hard enough. But when we have to speak in the moment, on the spot, that can be really tough. But the good news is, with a little preparation and practice, we can all get better. By changing the way we approach these situations, we can be more comfortable, more confident, and more compelling. So today, I'd like to share with you five specific mindset shifts that we can take to help all of us feel better when we're on the spot. Most of us, when we communicate, we want to do it right. We want to give the best answer, the most interesting feedback, the best small talk we can have. That pressure we put on ourselves can make it hard to do it well at all. To begin, there is no right way to communicate. There are better ways and worse ways, but there is no one right way. So instead of looking for perfection, we need to focus elsewhere. On the very first day of my strategic communication class at Stanford's Business School, I tell my students to maximize mediocrity. And you should see their jaws drop. No one has ever told them to be mediocre at anything. But here's why I do it. The pressure we put on ourselves to be perfect, to be right, reduces the likelihood that we can do that at all. Think of your brain as a computer. It's not a perfect analogy, but it works. You know if you have your laptop open and lots of apps running or on your phone, the same thing? Each one of those is performing a little less well because the other ones are running simultaneously. That's how your brain works. If part of my brain is dedicated to judging and evaluating everything I'm saying while I'm saying it, I'm going to be a little less effective when I'm speaking. So if we can focus instead on looking at perfection and focus on connection, we can do much better. When you speak, focus on the needs of your audience. Focus on connecting your message to them. Dial down that need to do it right, and you will do better. So at the end of my first class with my students, I finish that saying. I say, maximize mediocrity so you can achieve communication greatness. And my students get it, and all of you can too. So we need to focus on connection, not perfection. We also have to realize that we can get better at our spontaneous speaking. Many people feel that we're just not born with the gift of gab. That's not us. We can't get good at it. But in fact, we all can. We can get better by adopting a growth mindset. Carol Dweck, a professor at Stanford, talks about the difference between a fixed and growth mindset. Fixed is where we just see ourselves as the way we are, and that's it. Rather, we can adopt a growth mindset where we have the potential to become what it is we want to. One of my favorite aspects of her work is this notion of not yet. So when we have a bad spontaneous speaking situation, we simply say, not yet. I can learn to get better. I can work at it. So how do we do it? Three things. Repetition, reflection, and feedback. You have to get the reps. You have to practice. How do you do that? You join Toastmasters, an international organization designed to help people get better at their communication. You find low-stakes situations at work and in your family and with your friends to practice. You can even use generative AI to help you get better at your spontaneous speaking. Type in presentation on this topic, and it'll spit out some questions that you can practice answering. Not yet is a powerful way to help ourselves. And after we get through the repetition, we have to spend some time reflecting. You know that definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again 
but expecting different results. That's how many of us approach our communication. Through reflection, we can get better. And finally, we need to search out feedback from trusted others, from teachers, from mentors. That's how we can get better. Connection over perfection, not yet. The next mindset shift we have to make is to move away from feeling threatened and challenged when we're put on the spot. When somebody asks us a question or for feedback, we can feel like we have to defend ourselves, we have to protect, and that changes everything. It changes how we position our bodies. We tend to retreat, we make ourselves smaller. We answer in a short way with a curt tone. If we see these situations differently as opportunities, it changes everything. So when somebody asks a question, I can say to myself, how can I connect to this person? Where do we have some commonality? How can we collaborate? Where can I learn? If we see these situations as opportunities and not threats, all of a sudden we feel better and we actually do better. We open ourselves up, our answers are longer, our tone is more collaborative. A great way to see things as opportunities is to adopt a mindset that comes from the world of improvisation, and that is yes and. Yes and opens up the world to possibilities. When somebody asks you a question, you find those areas of similarity. Even if it's a hot, spicy question, the fact that the person cares and you care about the same topic is a yes and moment. Now, many of us, in the midst of speaking spontaneously, if it doesn't go well, we ruminate, we beat ourselves up, we feel bad. And our fourth way of changing our mindset is to deal with that. And we do it by adopting a mindset that comes from Mike Krzyzewski, famous basketball coach, Coach K. He used to teach his players that if something goes wrong, don't ruminate, don't stand there and beat yourself up, get back down the court. He taught all of his players, next play. If something goes wrong and you're a basketball player and you miss your shot, if you don't get down the court, the other team's down there and you're down one person. You need to move on to the next play. Similarly, if something goes great, get down that court, next play. When you're speaking in the moment and something doesn't go the way you want to, you want it to, you must move on to the next play. The final mindset we need to look at has to do with mistakes. Nobody likes making mistakes even though we understand that we learn through mistakes. So I have a suggestion. Instead of looking at mistakes as bad, seek out missed takes. You know in theater and in film and movies when a director asks the actors to do it again? They call that a take. In fact, they have that clapboard, take one, take two. So if in the midst of speaking, something goes wrong, instead of regretting it and feeling bad for making a mistake, just remind yourself, there's another take to make. Say it again, maybe differently, maybe tell a story, maybe add a testimonial. By making missed takes, you keep the conversation going, and you might just teach your audience something different. Connection over perfection, not yet. Yes and, next play, and missed takes. These five mindset shifts can dramatically change the way in which you communicate in the moment. They can help you to be more compelling, to be more confident, and to be more connected. They can help you to think faster and talk smarter. Thank you.